All right, welcome back, everybody. Got a quick fun one for you today. Got this hexagon grid generator for you for ZBrush. Uh, I guess it could work in, uh, I, I know it works in ZBrush 2018. I'm not sure if it does in the previous two versions, but someone will have to try that out for me. But it's a quick, easy tool to generate some fun little hexagon grids or honeycomb grids. And I'll show you a couple examples here. Let me turn off perspective. We'll go to the first one here, zoom in. As you can see, just a quick little grid there. Pretty simple, nothing too fancy. Uh, here's one that I did with some Boolean operations to make a nice, nice little base or porthole, porthole or whatever. Uh, did a real fancy one here. Not really going to go over this today on how to make this, but basically took a grid and deformed it using one of the 4R8 or 4R uh, or 2018's uh, deformers. You could do this function with it. Uh, made a denser version of it here. Zoom in so you can really see them here. And then also made this fancy one here, which has got some different intersect intersections. So, well, without further ado, let's go over on how to work with this. It's pretty quick and easy. So let's go click a regular cylinder 3D and zoom out. We need to go to your initialized tablet or palette and click on the H divide. We're gonna change him to six. We're going to align him on Z. We're going to create everything in the Z axis. And on your V divide, lower him all the way down. The lowest it'll go is 3. So there you go. And then mess with your inner radius. So for today, we're just going to go 90. You can make it whatever size you want. You can make it thicker or thinner. Well, I'd, I'd stick with uh, 90 being the, the lowest you go. All right, we got him all set up there. So go ahead and make poly mesh. Open up your array mesh and click open. And I'm gonna go to uh, hexagon grid. That's the one you're gonna be using today. And it's already set up for you. And it's specifically designed for the way we're making it here. And if I zoom out, you can see the grid that it will make for us. If we want to make it a little longer, we can go to our first stage and change that repeat to say like, we'll go 40 and then go down to X amount and click 40. And there you go. I really wouldn't manipulate the other stages too much because then it gets a little hairy. Uh, the numbers are a little wacky. I guess you might say, I don't know. But and now all you have to do is go to geometry and convert BPR to geo. And that will convert it to a full mesh. Now, right now it is a bunch of individual mes meshes. It's a bunch of hexagons. So what we want to do is open up under modified topology in the geometry tab. You want to do weld and we're going to go up to, we're going to try five first. Make sure that's not too much. And there we go. It is now welded everything together. Now it's just one solid piece of geo. Quick and easy. And that's basically how I made all those little grids. So what else can we do with this? Well, let's go back. Let's uh, make another cylinder here. Oh, real quick, when you make that uh, guy here, he's actually very large in a ZBrush space. So go ahead and do deformation and unify, and he'll shrink him back down to size. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and make a special one here. Let's go ahead and do cylinder, do our same scenario here, initialize, align on Z, H divide to six, V divide down to three, okay? And we'll do the inner radius here. Make them a little thicker, it's fine. As long as you uh, don't manipulate the outside, but we're actually gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how we can make it work. 
So we'll make poly mesh. Let's go into Z Modeler. And because he's six sided here, I want to activate symmetry by hitting X. Go to your rotate, radio count six. Now we should, oh, I've got to change him to the Z, turn off X. And now every outside polygon will work. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to insert edge loop, but I want to do multiple and click one on the specified target so it'll drop him dead center and we want to do this on the this axis here all right perfect now go to this spot right here we're going to do split before we do that i want to go ahead and add some creasing information so we go to crease crease tolerance to 45 which is perfect select that perfect all right now let's go ahead and split that point all right Q mesh polygroup all and we can zoom them out or uh, extrude them out hit alt change up your polygroups there uh, let's do something a little different here let's do insert specified resolution we'll do six this time click him there we go Q mesh polygroup all I don't want to do every single one of these I want to do polygroup island there we go tap alt there to change them up extrude him out each time giving it a slightly different polygroup there we go now to make this work when you weld everything together like we did on the previous one, it's best to just go ahead and remove that outer edge there. I know we didn't do it on the the flat one there, but it works a whole lot. It, it works just fine with these, but it doesn't work so well with these very fancy geometries, these fancy grids that we're making here. So we're going to do delete, and we're going to do, should just be able to do a polygroup all. Nope. So let's go ahead and do uh, Polygroup Island. So, all right, fine, we'll just tag it. I want to insert, I want to single poly, just create a temporary polygroup and tag, gone. Go to visibility and, nope, nope, display double. There you go. All right, now we got our uh, base mesh here ready to go. So now let's go back into, we'll do a quick unify on that and then we'll go to array. We're gonna open that one back up, hexagon grid. All right, so all in all, it's working just fine. The only thing is right now, they're kind of overlapping each other because it's, going beyond uh, the parameters or the, the specific space that it was working with. So, but that's an easy fix. Just click on the move and scale him down till he just barely touches. It's all right to have him overlap just a bit. Okay, look down here. Looks like he's doing just fine. Good. Zoom out, go ahead and do BPR to Geo. There we go. I'm gonna zoom in real quick. So we can geometry, modify, and we're gonna do a weld distance. We'll do five again. Be careful on how far you weld because I may try to capture some of these other polygons and weld points. It's interesting. I don't know what it did in there. Control Z. Let's go ahead. Oh, I think it tried to collapse all this here. So let's go ahead and do, let's just go back to one and see if it welded our mesh. Control Z. All right, we started at 580,000 points and weld points. 
I think it welded everything. If I do a dynamic, we can kind of see if there's any issues. I don't think there is. It would have given us a warning if there was really any major issues. And if you wanted, you can close the caps off or you can delete these outer ones here. Entirely up to you. Let me increase the dynamic subdivision there. But yeah, just a quick easy grid, hexagon grid, which I've batted my brain over for the past week to try to perfect and I think I've pretty much got it and so I'm sharing it with you guys and if you guys want to download all the array mesh and the sample grids that I made you can head over to my Gumroad page I'll have it on there as well as my QBrush so definitely go check it out there um, but yeah that's about it guys uh, like I said it was quick and easy one this time Nothing too fancy, just wanted to share what I've learned, and maybe you guys might be able to make some cool stuff with it. Definitely show me what you're making with it. I, I always appreciate that, and I guess we will see you in the next video, guys. You guys have a great day.